more about LG&E and King Cole of Kentucky and why we should have a uh, imminent domain over it. They haven't been cleaned up after themselves. They're throwing all this debris and shit in the streams in Appalachia. They don't give a fuck if Letcher County, 60% of Letcher County doesn't have running water. Uh, they have no vested interest in the community whatsoever. They only care about the stockholders. We know what corporations want. They want to make a shitload of money for themselves and keep all the profits. They want to socialize the cost. Make the uh, workers get food stamps and whatever things that they can get from the government uh, and, and privatize all the profits so they keep all the profits for themselves. When if the public owned the coal companies or the water companies or any utilities and any profits that were that would be made would be immediately reinvested back into the infrastructure um, of, you know, of that community. So... The very end of this public ownership of LG&E Alliance had a campaign in 2010, um, a campaign uh, to, to acquire KU. Uh, the very last paragraph I didn't read. So, with depression levels of unemployment in many parts of Louisville, with an affordable housing crisis throughout the city, with a school system facing school closings and staff teacher layoffs, and more and more people getting brown bills and having their gas and lights shut off because they can't afford to pay the time to act is now putting people into power. That's um, that was a alliance's message. That was a flyer they were passing around. It's 2010 when they were doing it. Two years ago, it's still still relevant today. The uh, uh, I get electric bills and it keeps on getting higher and higher. Frankly, everything's fucking privatized. Fifty thousand dollars college debt, gas, electric, water, rent. Man, it's this capitalist system. They just fucking rent out every little piece of thing that you could have. I'm surprised I'm allowed to walk on the sidewalk without even being charged for any money. Um, you know, since I assume the sidewalk is mine, but the way Occupy has shown that actually the government owns government shit, not us, the people. Uh, which is some bullshit. Um, but partially the people's fault since we ain't standing up. You know, there's little solidarity. 11% people are voting in the primaries. 25% is voting in the governor's election, so we're not even doing the very least of our civic duties. And if Kentucky isn't doing the least of our civic duties and we're not calling our representatives, we're not paying attention to what they're doing, there's no citizen groups, um, KFTC, but there's not enough that are making it a popular issue. So, Ashes to Gases, Joe Sanka, August 15, 2012, Leo Weekly, which I think used to be a Yarmouth production. I think Yarmouth started Leo Weekly, and now he's our... Um, representative who's running for re-election this year and he came down to Occupy and I think Yarmouth is a good uh, ally for Occupy from what I understand so far. So for the frustrated residents of Cane Run, let's see, ashes and gases, lg &E racks up more coal ash violations as it seeks to switch Cane Run Road plant to natural gas by Joe Sanka. For the frustrated residents of Cane Run Road living in the shadow of Louisville gas and electrics coal fire fired power plant events seem to be playing out like a bad tune on a broken record neighbors across the street from the plants coal ash landfill take photos and video of ash clouds leaving the company's property sending them to the metro air pollution control district apcd who then slap lg and e with violations and a fine after denial of wrongdoing lg and e promises to correct the problem yet the ash continues to blow over on the homes for kathy little who lives across from the plant has battled with lg and e for over the issue for years, uh, the situation's unacceptable. That's LG&E's cost of doing business, Kathy Little says. They hope they don't get caught, but when they do, they put the brakes on. They try to prolong the process. They pay the small fine. Ultimately, they don't solve the problem. APCD first gave LG&E a notice of violation for their fly ash emissions last fall, fining the company $26,000. So they did get fined. LG&E appealed, eventually settling with APCD last spring or last April, paying slightly less than that amount and agreeing to implement a compliance plan to decrease emissions. But the ash clouds pluming out the landfill did not stop as little and neighbor Greg Walker continued to collect video after video of violations. Last month, the APCD issued another notice of violation to LG&E with $24,000 in fines, citing video and additional samples from properties across the street testing positive for fly ash. This past weekend, Little posted more video of ash clouds from the last two months. They've done absolutely nothing different. They continue to release fly ash to this day, if not during the day, then at night when we can't see it. Either way, we get slammed. While Little and others express frustration with LG&E, 
as well as local, state, and federal regulators for not holding them accountable. Some degree of relief appears to be a few years down the road. At 5 p.m. today, Wednesday, August 15th, the APCD will hold a public hearing in Memorial Auditorium for what might be LG&E's final hurdle before they can begin construction of a new power plant that runs on burning natural gas, which they hope to complete before 2016. LG&E first announced their plans last year, saying this would be more cost efficient for the company and rate payers than retrograding its coal-fired plants to meet EPA pollution standards. This May, Kentucky's Public Service Commission approved the company's plan. Citizens at the hearing will have an opportunity to speak about the proposal, after which APCD's Chief of Engineering could allow the construction permit to go forward. Last week, LG&E approved a $583 million contract for two companies to construct the natural gas field plant. For Little, who recently received a national award from the Sierra Club for her efforts fighting coal ash, um, Kathy Little, so she's with the Sierra Club. Sierra, Sierra Club's another good group. Sierra Club, Kentuckians for the Commonwealth. I mean, they, didn't, they, they didn't hire me, and I would have been a great. Uh, I would have got so many new voter registrations. It would have been just something I'd want to do on my own time. Why they didn't contact me, I'm a little bit pissed about. Um, but whatever, whatever. The, uh, the Overall, they're good. They had the questionnaires uh, about the representatives that at least the Democrats answer. The Republicans never answer their questions. Um, and, and the Sierra Club, they're, they're also the ones that uh, protest in Frankfurt a lot of the time. So um, it's a fossil fuel and fracking is terrible, Little says. But our own personal situation out here is that there's a lot of toxic coal ash that's being hit with. And it would be better than what we have now. Our kids are suffering and they absolutely should not have to breathe these heavy metal particulates. Even if LG&E begins construction of a new plant this fall, that still means at least three more years of coal ash, not to mention the nearly mile-long mountain of ash left behind. Little is frustrated with APCD's inability to hold LG&E accountable for their violations and hopes that if the EPA or state government doesn't step in, metro government will. I think that the only true way to force LG&E to change the way they operate are new city ordinances because right now there's not a whole lot of tea in what they get punished with. Uh, Little says it's better than nothing, but there needs to be more. Metro Councilwoman Attica Woodson-Scott. Uh, represents district number one, friend of occupied, champion of working class people, where the plan is located, tells Leo that APCD is limited in power, but that metro government should examine new strategies to improve enforcement in partnership with the state government. We're spending millions of dollars in taxpayer money with LG&E, Attica Scott says. So the least we could do is be the moral authority on this issue, with which our neighbors expect from people serving in positions of political privilege. APCD spokesman Tom Nord says they are discussing the settlement with LG&E for violations handed down last month. While Nord admits the process can be slow and a $24,000 fine is not a lot of money for a billion dollar corporation, the ultimate goal is to work with LG&E so they can solve the problem. It's not a dream scenario to have this drag out, but we want to give LG&E a chance to make its case and give them a chance to fix this problem, Nord says. I think that they are really trying. Through their April settlement required LG&E to implement a compliance plan, nor concedes the problem continues. I think the fact that we've issued more notices of violation indicates that we feel like there is more work to be done here, Nord says. While LG&E admitted no wrongdoing in their April settlement and denies that coal ash is harmful to human health. Ah! LG&E and KU, you saying that coal ash is good for us. All that arsenic and all that poison and shit, that's good for us. You ain't going to admit that there's a health problem. It sounds like the cigarette companies. You know, we all know that there is problems, so the fact that you're saying that there isn't, just it's, it's some bullshit. It's some fucking legal fucking finagling is what it is. A bunch of lawyers want to compete, and so they say, yeah, everything's good. There's nothing wrong here. Prove it. Prove that it's bad. It's fucking coal ash. It's fucking debris. It's pollution in the air. How can that be good? How can that be a good thing? Nobody goes to a place and they say, hey, you know, can we make sure we have lots of coal ash to breathe in? I don't, I'm getting tired of this clean oxygen, this clean air. What I really need is I want some coal, you know, I need some coal ash to breathe in. You know, this, this air doesn't have enough bullshit in it. I need some coal ash, um, uh, you know, to, to snort. <laughs> so, they've admitted no wrongdoing. That's what fucking corporations do. They make all the fucking money for themselves. Fuck everybody else. They socialize the cost. Uh, put all their fucking pollution on other other people. They don't clean up after themselves. Um, this, this is why, in eminent domain, we should public, publicly own LG&E. We should publicly 
Take it over. LG&E uh, should be owned by Louisville, KU, PPL. We should not be giving all of our money to Pennsylvania, making some Pennsylvania CEO and, uh, 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 you know, and, and like um, a shitload of money. Why are we making these Pennsylvanians a shitload of money? We're providing jobs for the Pennsylvanians, and we're not getting shit here for ourselves. If we owned it, we'd bring the jobs here. We would control it here. We'd have more jobs, and also our utility rates would be cheaper, and the profits would be reinvested back into the infrastructure so that our buses and our you know, roads and libraries and buildings and services that are provided are always effective and efficient. Um, spokesman Brian Phillips says that they made substantial upgrades to their dust control measures. In a written response to Leo, Phillips says our plant people do a good job controlling dust at the plant site and work to be very responsive on any concerns raised by our neighbors. So Brian Phillips, you know, is a... Uh, Basically lying. I mean, he's a spokesman, right? So who the fuck gives a fuck about their spokesman? That's that's the, the press agent. You don't give a fuck what they say. That's the official statement. The official statements, I once heard a quote, I never believe anything until it's officially been denied. So, so yeah, LG&E, clean up your shit. Clean up your shit, help local communities, invest in alternative energy. And if you ain't being a good steward in the community, then you need to get the fuck out, and we need to take you guys over. Nobody would lose their jobs. You'd keep all your jobs, all the working class people, but the ownership and the leadership of King Cole and lg &E, it's fucking bullshit. They've been fucking Kentucky over for a long ass time. They control the, uh, Frankfurt. Frankfurt is bought for and paid by King Cole, along with the payday lending industry and the bankers and financial institutions. Not enough labor. Not enough labor and working class people. So, anyways, Viva la Revolution, Louisville. Occupy. We need to occupy LG&E, KU, PPL, Corporation. Who, who gives a fuck how many names they fucking use for themselves? It's King Cole. It's Kentucky's Cole. It's the Commonwealth. And it's time for the Commons to actually enjoy the wealth that's in our lands. It's supposed to be a commonwealth. The commons are supposed to enjoy the wealth. It's a so-called commonwealth.